the English coast. There's nowhere quite like it in all the world. And it's with a sense of childlike wonder and excitement that I return here to Brighton. Full of hidden messages and colourful characters, a place of secret nooks, unsolved mysteries, sea, sand, there must be some somewhere, lights, laughter, murder, ice cream, cheeky chappy entertainment, and some fantastic architecture, all merging together to make a heady mix in this intriguing little plot at the end of the country. It is the impressive and imposing yet light and joyful architecture that is reflected in the minds of the people that live here, surrounded as they are by the elements in all of their glory. The sea, the embracing coastal air, the pebbles of the earth and the fire of seasonal sunshine. An intriguing cocktail resonates from the opulent Regency landscape, emanating independent ideas that somehow merge and go hand in hand with spectral black dogs that manifest regularly on the beach under the shadow of the Royal Pavilion. On the skeletal West Pier in the dead of an off-season night, if you listen very closely, you may just hear laughter floating on the sea breeze as Max Miller and Tommy Trinder tell their saucy seaside stories and the self-proclaimed Lord of Brighton, Chris Eubank, parades himself like some self-obsessed peacock in his monster truck, the cock of the walk. This is the Old Market here in Brunswick Town, built in 1825. Both trading and transport have been prevalent here. Having had a bit of a shaky start as a market, the place was put to use as a stabling block for Brighton's working horses back in the days before motorisation. It is said that if you listen very closely, you can just hear the ghostly neighing of horses coming up from the basement, and in the streets hereabouts, the clip-clop of hooves on the cobbles. So this was where a culture chose to literally set up shop with over a hundred stalls selling everything from oils and incense and robes and books and candles and talismans and curios and occult paraphernalia of every nature. Brighton, in a sense, gave birth to a culture and a culture, in return, gave rebirth to the old market. But just what is it about this magical bedlam by the sea? Just look at the graffiti of any town or city. Midnight taggers claiming the territory, marking out turf. A signature without a painting as if the town itself were the work. The town was reinventing itself forming a unique personality, a new social mood, one of joy and gaiety in more ways than one. As a royal favourite, Brighton earned itself the affectionate nickname Dr Brighton for the health-giving waters and the tonic effect that the town had and still has on residents and visitors alike. Druids, ghosts, corrupt policemen, society it girls, tap the debutantes from Rodine Finishing School, all out on the prom of a Friday night thinking most unladylike thoughts as they dodge Phil Daniels on his Vespa, who is being pursued by a bunch of rockers on Royal Enfields, all on a mission for the ever-present threat of Pinky Brown, who smokes a cigar the size of a stick of Brighton Rock. <laughs> 